You're listening to Radio Free Utopia, bringing truth to you Tobithians 24 hours a day. Welcome! I still miss you, Rhonda, after all these years. Also joining us from his lock cell is Raul Tejada, master mechanic who can be executed at any time. Hello, Raul, or should that be Hola? Oh, uh, either one worse. Today you die, Raul! I command it! Ooh, Raul! Supreme Commander Tabitha says you die today! Any reaction? I'm going to obey Supreme Tabitha. Claro. Whatever she say. Just I feel so bad, I die before I fix her special robot. You're listening to UNC, the Utopian News Channel. <laughs> so thank you for the sub. The sub kind of interrupted it a little bit, but I, I appreciate the sub. Welcome to the Fallout lore cast. That's uh, that's good old Tabitha. And um, we're going to be talking about Tabitha today and the state of Utobitha. <laughs> but welcome back to the show. This is your host, Tom or Robots. And I am here, as always, with my co-host and wonderful uh, daughter whose birthday is coming up very soon, Lainey in Neos Pandora. How how is it going? How you doing? It's it's good. It's going good. I got what five days to my birthday. Five days to your birthday. Woo! Woo! You're catching up to me. Uh, sure. Percentage wise, that's how birthdays work. Yeah, I guess exponentially. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you will. You will. <laughs> we will percentage wise catch up to me, but never quite actually be a hundred percent if we if we were to live forever right this is one of those things people don't think about but like i remember when i when i realized that i was like half the age of my dad and i was like oh that's weird and now i'm like i don't know what 75 percent the age of my dad almost almost 75 percent the age of my dad which is weird it's weird but yeah you're getting old now so congratulations on being old um, but, Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> Jedi, uh, on, um, YouTube where I'm streaming on, we're streaming on Twitch and on YouTube, uh, twitch.tv slash robots radio is the main place, but there's also a YouTube channel for robots radio. You can just search it. Um, but Jedi was asking if, if you're single, no, she's, uh, no, she's also I'm, engaged as well. So I'm very much engaged. <laughs> sorry, sorry, <laughs> sorry to have to ruin your hopes. Um, but welcome back to the, to the fall orcast. We will be continuing our conversations about new Vegas. We've been talk about new vegas for the last few months and specifically the nightkin and there's some really cool nightkin characters in new vegas we talked last week about our first nightkin character and we're moving on to our second one tabitha who i mentioned just a minute ago and Rhonda, and the state of utobitha and we're going to go into some details about what's going on with tabitha and some of the quest line bits that you go through in you know handling these so the situation, we'll just call it a situation, the situation with Tabitha and uh, the different ways that you can kind of play through that. So, Lainey, let's go ahead and kick this off. How does this, how do we start out? Well, first, I want to introduce Tabitha. Tabitha is, well, the whole point of this episode, but also we can call her best friend Tabitha. And when I, when I realized that, best friend Tabitha. well, <laughs> Well, <laughs> that sometimes she refers to herself as best friend Tabitha. Uh -huh. It made me think of this inside joke that me and CJ have, where there's an ex of mine that um, I only dated for like a few months in like my sophomore year of high school, right? Okay. But I have a million photos with them from after we dated. We weren't even friends anymore. They're just like school events, but we're in all these photos together. And so we just keep calling them best friend blank you know sarcastically uh -huh. Uh -huh. because we have all these photos together and that's all i can think of when i read best friend tabitha i'm like oh best friend tabitha oh boy all right <laughs> <But> anyway <laughs> so tabitha is as you meet her in uh, new vegas the leader of the state of utobitha which she formed and a show host on the black mountain radio station yes um, which you heard she, a clip from at the beginning of the show so if you yeah, haven't yeah. if you haven't heard that yet or play through new vegas well first of all spoilers this this is a lore cast, so it's going to be spoilery. Um, but secondly, man, I love I love these audio clips. We're going to be this is something we used to do a lot. I used to incorporate these clips in, in the show, but we're going to be doing that more often again. It's something that Lainey and I discussed recently. And we're like, you know what? We should we should start putting those back in? And it's it's just one of those like we transitioned to doing a live show. So there's some of the components of this that 
kind of got put to the side once we and now that we're kind of more comfortable i've got the setup working that's something we're going to do more often so stay tuned for more of that but um go on lady yeah okay so tabitha is a nightkin obviously as we discussed um and she came from unity the same as lily bowen who we talked about last episode and tabitha was actually and i mentioned this before tabitha was a commander and led the group that lily was in after lily was created um and so from the beginning of tabitha's uh, period of life as a nightkin she has been put into these leadership roles which is really interesting and in a way or a couple of ways uh utabitha wouldn't exist had unity not created tabitha <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> which is which is really interesting you know it would, at least not in the way that um you know, maybe there's another society that could be anti-human and do that that whole thing. But it would not be the way it is without good old Tabitha without being good old created. Tabitha, she's, she's important. <laughs> 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 so, um, unfortunately, Tabitha didn't form in a day. And so after the fall of Unity, Lil, uh, not Lily, Tabitha actually wandered the wasteland for like over a century. <laughs> Did not settle anywhere for a long time. And... This wasn't terrible. She wasn't alone. She had a group of Nightkin with her who had also escaped and, you know, were trying to live their own lives. And it was during this time that she met her right hand man or right handy man, uh, a Mr. <laughs> handy named Rhonda. <laughs> <laughs> I see what you did there. <laughs> Mr. Handy, her right handy man, her right handy um, bot. <laughs> so, yeah, so she met Rhonda, and Rhonda is a Mr. Handy, and together they started saving super mutants that they may encounter on the road. Nice. And so, um, yeah, I mean, it's kind of cool. So a lot of these super mutants were suffering at the hands of humans, um, and not just in, like, your usual, oh, some super mutants ran to some people, and, like, they have to defend themselves scenario. I'm talking things mm -hmm. like, um, well, there was a there's another member of the Master's Army that you know went on his way and he was captured by some humans and mm -hmm. they cut out his tongue and mm -hmm. they started torturing him and this is um this is mean son of a bitch <laughs> <laughs> i love that. i love this character i love this character i love that that that's his name um yeah. I, also freaking humans always hunting down super mutants what are you doing somebody needs what to make wait, wait okay so mod idea side note somebody needs to make a mod of fallout new vegas or wherever and uh from the perspective of being a super mutant that allows you to be a super mutant and you start as like a member of utobitha or one of these locations where there's a lot of super mutants right and then you play through the game as if you are a super mutant but your only goal is to just kill all the humans <laughs> <laughs> that'd be funny <laughs> like reverse fallout all right sorry yeah, sorry sorry go on go on so uh mean, well, okay. mean son of a bitch which so, I, I love Mr. Okay. Son of other, a bitch. other side <laughs> another side note that's one of my favorite uh cursing things to say like you guys listen to our content a lot i don't i don't curse very much um and that's because i feel like it it takes away from uh the impact that that makes when you actually need to use it um, I'm not against bad words. I just think that they should be used when they really make sense. But son of a bitch, I think is really funny. <laughs> so you'll hear me use that specifically. So and specifically, uh, even more specifically, either sing the, the completely singular son of bitch or completely plural sons of bitches. Those are my go to's. So anyway, I'm sorry. So Mr. Mr. Son of a bitch. Um, Mr. Son of a bitch was <laughs> captured, right? And Tabitha went in and saved him. And so this is a pretty big deal. This is just one of many of Tabitha's ben ventures into helping and aiding super mutants. And I'm sure after seeing a lot of super mutants being um, mistreated in this kind of way, it would probably really infuriate you, <laughs> you know? And so definitely it created this really negative connotation around humans, you know, spending all this time wandering the wasteland and just seeing terrible things happening to people who are like you. It sounds awful. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, it sounds like she's like a, are... a hero, like a super mutant hero. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Definitely a super mutant hero. Not so much like a human hero. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, um, so yeah. So now, while exploring the wasteland with with her little gang with all her little nightkin friends um 
they had continued to abuse stealth boys, which is unsurprising, you know, especially when you consider that you have a whole group of these nightkin together and that is what they are all addicted to. Of course, they are just going to keep using them. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. Um, and this is not good for their brains in the slightest. Um, as we've heard in previous episodes, terrible things happen when you abuse stealth boys, especially for centuries at a time. <laughs> mm-hmm. So, but, uh, but Tabitha was fine, right? Well, for a little while, so <laughs> Tabitha was able to remain relatively stable despite devolving, devolving, developing, I can't talk, uh, dissociative personality disorder. And this was all thanks to her aide and handy companion, Rhonda. And Rhonda was able to essentially provide um, companionship and some medical help to Tabitha on this this journey. And so that was all, you know, fine and dandy. She was keeping it together for a bit until they until. come across Black Mountain. So uh-huh. in 2275, three years before the events of New Vegas, mm-hmm. they come across Black Mountain. And Rhonda at this point, despite Tabitha, you know, pulling through, Rhonda is very beat up, you know. She's just a robot. <laughs> She's Poor been through Rhonda. a lot, you know, Help for me, years and years. Yeah. <laughs> so they arrive in Black Mountain and Rhonda goes into what what they refer to as hibernation mode. Um, essentially, she doesn't work anymore. <laughs> and so Rhonda is gone and essentially puts herself out of commission. And of course, being Tabitha's best friend, Tabitha is devastated. And you see the decline that this had on her in many, many ways. Um, But somewhere in the midst of all this, she gets a radio show, right? Yeah. yeah. (laughs) And it seems crazy. How does, how do we go from wandering the wasteland and like your best friend dies basically in black mountain to suddenly you have a radio show. Like it's it's a strange connection. I think, I think that that was just part of the equipment that they came across was. Well, right. And so I'm going to, I'm going to get into it. Yeah. 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 (laughs) Yeah, so um, there is another survivor from Unity that, uh, this is Marcus, he's a normal super mutant, not a Nikon, and he decides that he wants to help Tabitha at Black Mountain. And what he does is not give her a radio show, but he provides her a terminal that she can use to journal in, right? Mm -hmm. And this can be a very therapeutic thing, you know? Lots of therapists will recommend journaling. If you're in rehab, they recommend journaling sometimes, you know? it, It can be very helpful to you. And this may have been very helpful to Tabitha, but we will never know because Tabitha discovered that this terminal was still linked up to the radio station, the local radio station. Right. right. And so while this could have been uh, very nice, she just, <laughs> you know, continues to spiral and decides that she's going to start making radio broadcasts and Within a week, within a week of discovering that it's connected, they fix up the 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 whole thing, the whole radio, and she can start broadcasting again. And so she effectively becomes the three dog of New Vegas for super mutants. Ooh, yeah, for super mutants, perhaps. <laughs> <laughs> but unfortunately, <clears throat> it's not quite her. One second. <laughs> All better. <laughs> to clear my throat. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> um, so unfortunately, it's not specifically her. So Tabitha is doing this radio show, but uh, the death of her friend really, really messed her up. And now that she has nothing to really help her with her dissociative personality disorder, she develops an altar inspired by Rhonda. Uh-huh. And it is this altar. It is Rhonda that hosts the show. With occasionally Tabitha showing up, uh, interjecting while she's talking, or as a special guest occasionally. <laughs> uh-huh, right. Um, so this is pretty funny. And after she realized that she could do this radio show and they got it all fixed up and everything was good and dandy and lovely, she decides that she doesn't want to leave the building ever. <laughs> she she will not leave it, no matter what people do, what Marcus tries to do. He tries to like very politely, you know tell her to do other things <laughs> you know mm-hmm. and she won't hear any of it she just wants to do this show right um and at this point you know the people who are listening to the show are really just super mutants it's the people that are in her immediate vicinity that know that it exists even and so 
<laughs> it develops a following with these second generation super mutants. I love um, this. And I, I love this about this. <laughs> I, I, I love it because like one of the things New Vegas uh, to interject real quick, because I as you guys know, I like to I like to draw you into this concept and, and, and get you thinking about things from other people's perspectives and being in the world. Right. That's part of what's so beautiful about these games is that you can really be in the world and experience things the way that other people would experience them. And one of the things that we don't do very often in the game, because the games are so human centric, is see the world through the eyes of the other quote unquote intelligent races out there. So even though super mutants are wrought with mental issues, let's say, you know, like they, they're losing their memories. They are not the brightest candles in the candle store. I don't know the good analogy for that. Um, they still can do things the way people do things, right? So this idea of like one of them broadcasting, even though she's got messed up dissociative personality disorder, um, but broadcasting out to the wasteland and you being a super mutant and coming across a radio channel because you can use a radio. Super mutants use, you know, complex energy weapons like they, they, they can do things and turning that on and going, oh, she's super mutants like me. I listen to this, you know, like, and, and just deciding like, I, this is now my favorite radio station as a super mutant, like these kinds of just human things make them more, I don't know, approachable, or you can understand the world through their perspective. And the idea that to a super mutant, humans are very dangerous. They, you know, like, we, we think of it from the human perspective, right? Like as humans, super mutants are very dangerous. Night can especially are very dangerous because they're often stealthed, you know, like uh, who wants to run into a gigantic 11 foot tall monster that's invisible, right? That sounds terrifying. But as a super mutant, the humans are just as dangerous to the super mutants because they outsmart them and they're, they're wily and, you know, <laughs> and they, they often kill them in large numbers when there's big conflicts and those kinds of things. So I, I love seeing this through that perspective. And I think that the concept of the radio channel really helps us humanize them in a way. I'm done with my little rant. You can go on. <laughs> yeah, it's <laughs> it's really nice. Um, unfortunately, these specifically the second generation super mutants start regarding Tabitha as a prophet. And she just she really feeds into it. She lets them. <laughs> right. And, and um, how and much creates... and how, how how much is this a commentary on modern society and our um, I, idealization of people who are in the media? Um, like, does that make sense? Like like in old religion terms, the prophet, a prophet was somebody who stood on a street corner and prophesied in front of a large crowd of people. It was like a religious thing. But in modern day terms, a prophet is somebody who gets on media and says, this is what you need to know. And this is why things are going to happen the way they are. And this is where they're going. So in modern media terms, there are, I mean, think about who are the personalities. And this of course goes into politics in some direction, but either on the right or the left in whatever media channel you're listening to, those people are shaping our thoughts. And so this is happening in New Vegas with Tabitha. She's shaping the thoughts of her other super mutants. So in a way, she is a prophet in a modern context. Well, and I think something else that's interesting here is that when you look at, and Sam Kildroy in the chat kind of alludes to this with the hashtag cult of the super mutant, which is funny. Yeah. Um, yeah. But genuinely, if you think about lots of cults, especially uh, what in the 70s and 80s, a lot of them revolved around uh, religion. And one of the big things that leaders would do is say that they are they are speaking for God, right? They right. are the only person you can trust because the words coming out of their mouth are from God. And this is a big deal. And so Tabitha, essentially, when you combine this letting people believe that she's a prophet with, even though even though people in her generation and other supermeans know that she isn't, it's crazy. Anyway, when you combine this with her dream of creating some sort of supermean utopia, she's a cult leader. <laughs> yes. Right. Absolutely. <laughs> right. And, and many cult leaders have signs of other uh, psychological issues. Um, so there's that connection as well. This idea of her, you know, struggling with a psychological issue, which ironically makes her even a more effective cult leader, which is 
awesome <laughs> and terrifying <laughs> at the same time. Yeah. So <laughs> with the second generation super mutants warming up the Tabitha so much and the other Nightkin, you know, for that matter, it created a rift between the second generation super mutants and the Nightkin and the first generation mm -hmm. super, super mutants. And all these people were living together in on this mountain, you know, uh, and Utopatha was not yet a thing. But because this was such a, a problem, they just kept fighting and fighting and fighting. And Marcus, who had been so friendly to Tabitha from, from the beginning, tries to help and realizes that there's nothing he can do that won't just make people more angry. Right. And these are super mutants. You have to imagine it's probably easy to make them <laughs> angry. Yes. <right. laughs> it's like having a bunch of like hulks, you know, just <laughs> yeah. all together. Yeah. <laughs> a bunch a of giant idea. babies stomping around that are just going to have yeah. a, a tantrum at any moment. Yeah. <laughs> So Marcus decides that instead of engaging more and possibly just making things worse, especially for himself, he would rather just leave and start somewhere new, which he does successfully. And on his way out, he smashes a radio transmitter, <laughs> which <laughs> says a lot, I think. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, despite this, this hiccup, uh, when it comes to, you know, having to fix the radio all over again, Tabitha is very content with her radio show and she loves love this and she knows that it is leading up to this ability to create her utopian world, her state of Utobatha. She has this in her mind from the beginning. Like she is ready to create a better world for super mutants, no matter what it takes. <laughs> and in order to make this dream come true, she does what anyone would do and enslaves a Mexican ghoul mechanic. Who you heard in the intro, which I, and his <laughs> voice, the voice actor is so good. It's so he's just like, yeah, OK, <laughs> like, <he's>, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's a pretty awful situation. I mean, oh, what yeah, are you going to do? Fight back? <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's just like, yeah, all right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, she does have him guest on the show quite a bit, like multiple, <laughs> you know, multiple broadcasts. <laughs> and so Raul, Raul is interesting. They enslave him and he is expected to maintain the whole operation, basically. He is their maintenance guy. And if he stops doing maintenance, they let him know that he will be executed. And so he just has to put up with it or die, basically, mm -hmm. um, which is tragic. This is this is really awful. And it's weird to think that, like, well, OK, there's a couple of things here that I think are interesting. Okay. Uh, one being that ghouls are humans. I mean, so are super mutants in a way. But super mutants, we can say that they're far enough removed. But ghouls at their core, especially ones that are not feral, are still humans. They just look a little different. Yeah, mentally, they are and humans. Right. Mentally, they are humans. Right. right? Yeah. And... So it is interesting that they would choose to enslave one uh, for that reason, right? It's like, oh, okay, they're like humans. Maybe they align them with humans. But you could also take that and spin it around and think lots of humans are terrible to ghouls because they don't understand that right. ghouls are just humans. Absolutely. And yeah. from that perspective, it's like, well, why would they want to enslave a ghoul if they could just enslave a human, perhaps? Maybe because the ghoul would live forever? It feels like a, like, I don't know. I feel like if I was... I don't maybe maybe it was just convenience. Yeah, yeah. It may, he may strange. have just been the person that was there, or uh, yeah. super mutants may not be as picky. Or the fact that they uh, inherently are against humans, maybe they look at the ghoul as being something other than a human. And so, in their. Well, that's what I wonder is minds, if you know? they do look at the ghoul as something other than a human, and this is another non human being that is probably you know negatively impacted by humans mm -hmm. it feels weird that they would also like i don't know i feel like like why not like team up with the ghouls right but i guess super mutants really don't care about anything other than super mutants yeah yeah i can see so, i can see enslaving they also don't think that even if they're okay with ghouls because they're not humans quote unquote um i don't know that they would view them as equals because they think they're better than everyone else you know that's yeah. it's just like inherent to their personalities. Also, uh, I didn't realize this. Thank you for sharing it. Envy Courier in chat says Danny Trejo was the voice of Raul. Oh, interesting. Yeah. So very cool. Uh, famous actor um, and badass looking dude. He's been in like lots of stuff. <laughs> yeah. So. All right. So let's get back to this this radio show situation. So mm -hmm. obviously they have a maintenance man and it is running smoothly. <clears throat> all over again. One second again. 
Lainey's, Lainey's, man, did you swallow a ghoul? What happened? I, I must have. Something is wrong. I've got like a frog in my throat. Is that a saying? So yes, that's a saying. that is a saying. I, I have, if anybody's listened to the show, you'll know that I just kind of make up my own sayings. But that, that one actually is a saying. I accidentally mess up sayings. I'll, I'll like combine them. I'll like do mm-hmm. half and half and just like, it's, it's fun. Anyway, um, <laughs> with everything running smoothly again, the radio started broadcasting a somewhat disorganized 24 hour feed of anti-human propaganda. And this feed was so deeply unliked by the nearby wastelanders Uh that many would say that they would rather listen to static than anything the area had to offer on the radio. That makes sense because it's all about destroying them. Yeah, it's all it's all anti-human. Yeah, Mm -hmm. (laughs) I can't imagine they'd like it. But it's funny. It's not even entertaining. They would rather just turn it off <laughs> yeah. Yeah. um yeah and well, it's a constant reminder of the threat that's like right around the corner yeah <laughs> um so unfortunately for tabitha <laughs> the broadcasts won't ever be able to reach really outside of this immediate area of people who don't really like it because Despite, you know, originally probably being able to reach much farther, you know, across the wasteland, Raul isn't able to fix it to the extent that it goes back to like full capacity, basically. Mm -hmm. And so it doesn't have the original range. It just reaches people in the Mojave. (laughs) Those people all hate it. (laughs) So even if Tabitha could reach thousands of anti-human creatures that want to join up for their cause, she never will. And it's it's pretty disappointing, at least for her. Maybe not, you know, as a human thinking about it, I'm like, oh good. Like <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's probably <laughs> it's probably good for the humans anywhere nearby that yeah. there there's not some sort of organized super mutant force forming uh that wants right. to, to wipe them all out because that would yeah. be extremely <laughs> dangerous. Can you imagine just, you know, going about your day like farming potatoes or whatever uh-huh. and the super mutants just come walking by. They're like moving, they got like their luggage with them. They're like gonna go join my anti-human cult (laughs) walking around (laughs) no Um, good good. all right so if if you want to do the intermission now we can this is all this is all her her backstory yeah so uh, we wanted to cover the backstory before we get into the details of the quest line that takes you as your player character through this section of the game and how you meet tabitha and then the different options and things that can occur while you're going through it so we'll get to that after the break. Hello there, old chap. Good to see another of General Atomic's finest still eager to serve. So this is the part of the show where I get to thank our patrons, all 44 of you guys, for helping to support us. Eleni and I very, very much appreciate it. Thank you so much for your support. This is something that we're able to do because of you and we can't tell you how much that means to us. Um, this is something I do full time now. I'm, I'm still trying to get to the point where I've completely replaced my income um, that I was, you know, what I was making at my regular job. But it is now s- something that I do regularly. It's something that helps support Lainey as well. And we extremely appreciate it, especially our tier five and tier six patrons who get called out every week because that's one of the bonuses at tier five. Um, we have Pie Man and Devin A., Thank you so much. And especially thank you to Pie Man. Liberty Pie. He is the top tier patron. There's only one slot. Sorry, he has it. You can't sign up. Uh, tier six. You can't sign up at tier six, but you can sign up at any of the other tiers if you're interested in, in helping support the show. We would extremely appreciate you even just going to patreon.com slash follow Lorecast, taking a look at the different tiers and seeing if there's something that you would like to do to help support us. Um, it's what helps us do this every week. And there are 44 of you guys. I would love to get that number up to 50. And really, it, you can support the show even at one dollar a month if there's any of those slots available still where you can get ad free episodes a day early. And there's lots of other tiers that you can go to that give you all sorts of different rewards, including joining us at the end of the show or at the end of the month on the patron chat show, which we talk about all sorts of different kinds of things. So if you want to join us there, you can do that as well. And you can even offer up suggestions for topics for us to cover and for you to chime in on on that episode. So thank you to everybody who helps support the show. You guys are absolutely amazing. All right, let's get on with the rest of the show. If you have any questions about Nuka World, I'd be delighted to answer them. 
All right, so let's talk about the New Vegas quest line. Crazy, crazy, crazy. Are you still muted? Oh no, Lainey's face is moving. Ooh. Oh, there you go. <laughs> I'm back. Okay, so this quest line is just just so much more fun when you know all the backstory. Mm -hmm. No, actually, like it's kind of when I oof. Oof. It's hard. Okay, objectively, <laughs> Lost so many playing thoughts. these games, uh -huh. so many thoughts. Let's get through them. Okay, objectively, when playing this game, when I when you learn about someone who I guess you know, if you're a human character, which you have to be, you know, as far as Fallout games go now, um, and Tabitha is actively against you, or any other creature is actively, you know, would just happily kill you. Mm -hmm. And then you yeah. learn about their backstory. It like is really hard for me to be like, oh, yay, let's talk about killing them. <laughs> like, yeah, it makes well, me sad because I'm like, oh. <laughs> once you once you humanize a character, it's hard to. I mean, yeah. Uh, in one sense, she's bringing a bunch of super mutants together in order to kill humans. And if you're a human, which you are in the game then you should probably stop her. But at the same time, the more you know about her and you start to feel bad or pity the things that she's had to go through, the more you feel like, okay, well, maybe we should do a little bit more than just shoot her in the head, right? Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> so how does, how does this crazy, quest crazy, start crazy. out? Crazy. Yeah, crazy, crazy, crazy. It's named after a 1953 uh, song, actually, by the Five Royals called Crazy, 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 which a lot of these... Uh, things are there's a lot of connections between songs, especially in New Vegas. Um, so how does this start out? So when you approach Black Mountain, um, I think specifically from a certain direction, or if you just happen to go uh, towards where this super mutant Neil is living. Yeah, there's a, will, there's a main path that kind of leads up into Black yeah. Mountain. Yeah. Um, he'll come up to you and he will warn you about Utopitha, which has, at this point has, has fully formed. It is a fully functioning super mutant society. And he warns you that it is strictly anti-human. And if you approach and they see you, they will kill you on sight. Mm -hmm. Which is great. I remember um, this being very threatening when, when I uh, ran into it the first time I played New Vegas and thinking like, yeah, I'm not going there yet because it was like the first few times you play a Fallout game, they feel difficult. You're not used to like min-maxing your character. You're not you're not used to like the what the full extent of the world is, the potential for enemies, uh, how to you know, how to even target enemies correctly with vats in order to do the most damage. Like all of that stuff is stuff you learn over time. So I remember thinking, yeah, a bunch of super mutes who want to kill me. I'm not going there. And I avoided this. I actually went back later and did the quest later once I was more familiar with the way the game worked. Yeah, well, not surprised because I mean, you're right. It is scary if you don't know if you don't know what you're going to encounter. And he's like, there's this terrible anti-human place. Let's go to it. Basically, is what he says to you, because he asks you to go and end it he tells you to go kill tabitha that's yeah. his request yeah and which is interesting coming from a super mutant um and if you are very polite to him and your speech is over 50 you can ask him to help you which is so interesting right mm -hmm. you would think oh why wouldn't why wouldn't he want to be a part of this super mutant because scheme. they're freaking super mutants <laughs> with giant weapons yeah that's why <laughs> so, it takes a little convincing <laughs> <laughs> so Utobitha, as we mentioned, is constantly guarded. Uh, this is day and night, and they have different different things happening, you know, at different times, different guards. So during mm -hmm. the day, you would just encounter super mutants, um, just kind of around the perimeter. But at night, which it seems like, ooh, nighttime, like they'll have their guard down, you can sneak in, and it might look like there's no one there but realistically there are nightkin patrolling the roads that are using stealth boys yes and so you can run into an invisible baddie just out of nowhere you know and if you're playing this game and like you said if you don't really know how fallout works and you don't know what to expect and you walk in and you're like oh it seems like the coast is clear and then you get bombarded with invisible nightkin mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> not ideal <laughs> i'm pretty sure and i I've, i have to think back a decade but i'm pretty sure when i first played through this i tried approaching at night the first time 
and was just like, oh, God, <laughs> like these invisible super mutants. This is bad. This is a terrible idea. And I kind of noped out of it. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But I didn't realize until you and I were working on this episode that uh, the day night cycle has an effect on which enemies show up. I think I just it just kind of thought the second time I approached it was it was just I, I somehow avoided them or something didn't run into them. But the fact that they're not necessarily there unless it's nighttime is interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, it's cool. It makes me wonder like what other areas are like that. I think there are a I'm lot sure of these things, especially in the Obsidian developed games they there's a little bit more oh, of that that goes on although um bethesda has used this before i mean the, there are going all the way back to like morrowind there are events and things and characters and movement patterns between places that happen uh, this happens a lot in oblivion as well so i wouldn't be surprised if there's some of that in fallout 3 because that was the same era i think there's a little bit less of that in skyrim although some of that stuff does still occur um, you know, uh, you know, just like movement of like characters around their cities and things is pretty common in those games. Yeah, that actually makes a lot of sense. I this is only tangentially related, but I was listening to someone talk about um, specifically like older Elder Scrolls games versus Skyrim. But it makes sense, you know, in this context as well, where because of things like different patterns at different times of day and like the way people interact with each other mm -hmm. and the way that they interact with you, you know, you can be you are you are the dragon board. You can do crazy things, but the guards of Skyrim are still going to spit on your shoes, you know, right. but in, right. in like oblivion or I imagine in more when it's much more, it feels more immersive in that, like the things you are doing affect things and the things that other people are doing affect other things and the day and night affects things, you know, feels more lifelike, which is interesting. Yep. Um, anyway, so if you decide that you are going to brave Utopitha and mm -hmm. you want to go, you want to go, uh, do some damage. You can follow this path that leads you up to this crater that has a satellite dish in it. It's like a little dilapidated, you know, satellite mm -hmm. dish. Yep. And next to this is a ham radio and you can talk directly to Tabitha there. I love, I, um, I also love that. I love that your first communications with her are over radio signal. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, you can, you can talk to her and this is nice because you don't have to deal with, uh, danger <laughs> quite yet as long as you can make it there safely and depending on your intelligence and speech you'll have a different uh you have a variety of options there's four options and there actually used to be five in the development of the game but we're going to talk about that in a second mm. um so you have four options in the game that you can do and the first one is if your speech is over 75 you can convince tabitha that the dum-dums are going to take over and this is the super mutants and she will uh, right. The regular super you know, mutants. Regular super mutants yeah. um, versus Nightkin, right? Mm -hmm. And she believes that they're they're dumb because they're not as advanced as Nightkin or as her, right? She is in charge. How dare they consider, you know, overthrowing Utobitha? And this creates a civil war between the super mutants and the Nightkin. And this just goes on endlessly. And in the first round, um, if you watch the events pan out, the super mutants win. But then more and more Nightkin come and they just get bombarded and it just keeps going. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, that's that is one option. <laughs> you can do that. And it's fun to think of all these options as like, if you, I mean, obviously we're telling you them, but if you went to into this blind, you know, yeah, just you the sheer you number know. of things that yeah. could go on here. Right, right. <laughs> um, and so if you tell Tabitha that you're a big fan of super mutants, right? Maybe you want to like warm her up a little, you know, be like, oh, not all humans. Hashtag not all humans. <laughs> 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 she will not like that. Um, you know, it makes sense. She, she gets a little sarcastic with you and she'll send, you know, nearby guards to come and mess your day up. Uh, mm -hmm. and if you say nothing to her, then she just gets annoyed and stops talking to you. Um, which is nice. And then if you have really low intelligence, <laughs> I love you get these. to choose a choice <laughs> that it reads as dumb, 
what <laughs> that's the whole choice <laughs> i love it <laughs> right so imagine like, you go up to the like, radio what <laughs> yeah yeah she's like uh what, hello <laughs> you're like what and she said she'll just dismiss you as a dumb dumb and disconnect too so you know uh if you play really dumb characters i don't know maybe you like your characters really beefy and really stupid we love a good himbo okay if you're playing as a himbo then <laughs> you can also annoy Tabitha. <laughs> Uh-huh. You too can annoy Tabitha. Um, and let's talk about the fifth option. So this one's fun. This is not in the game. It did not make it into the game, but it was in development. Mm-hmm. Where uh, you can tell her, just like the first option, that Dum Dums are taking over. But you can tell her at a lower speech check, I believe. If if one at all. Who knows? It's not in the game. Um, basically, this is reliant on you having discovered from dialogue with Neil or dialogue with Tabitha herself already that she is paranoid right so you can lean into that and be like oh they are gonna take over like ooh, spooky right um but that's not an option you know whatever dialogue would have triggered this in the game they did not put it in they don't include it so it's not there (laughs) um but it's fun to think that like i don't know there's just, just this quest in particular has so many different outcomes and i guess at any of these points you can just decide you don't want to do it anymore and like leave you know oh, yeah i mean you, you can just <laughs> you know leave the quest yeah yeah um so it's funny so like you could get to the to this little ham radio bit and just be like uh you know and just move on um so yeah so this is your first discussion with her and if you decide not to enact a civil war then you can continue the quest and if you survive any super mutants that are still guarding or you know on their way and you decide to infiltrate utopitha then on your way in you are likely to encounter the remains of Rhonda, the original Rhonda, good old mr handy Rhonda, good old and mr. best friend Rhonda. Mm-hmm. <laughs> good old mr Rhonda. Rhonda handy and if you're science is at least 60 you are able to repair her and this is the only real like good ending to this quest because you can repair Rhonda, and this is enough motivation for tabitha to go do something else with her life (laughs) because her best friend is back you know yeah um essentially she was doing this radio show just kind of filling that void you know she she became (laughs) Rhonda, and now Rhonda's back and so things are good again um and so she doesn't even try to kill you which is just lovely of course and you can also go to the prison and free raul without any negative consequence in this scenario i think you also get good karma here i didn't write it down but i think you get good karma here Mm -hmm. um yeah i think i think and yeah yeah and it means that nothing else that you do in relation to utopia really generates any karma and the other scenarios like different things you do have other you know have other results um and so the other alternative to this uh and the final way that this can go is that you genuinely just go in don't fix Rhonda, and kill tabitha right um which is what neil asked you to do in the first place and if you kill her then you tabitha essentially is over and there is no longer a crazy super mutant society in black mountain because you dismantled it um and if you're doing that uh there's a couple ways that you can go about it. You can go in and find her and fight her if mm-hmm. you'd like. Yeah, I think, you can also... I think that's what I did the first playthrough. I think I just, you know, butchered everybody, got to her and just killed her without even realizing that, like, there are other variations. And, you know, early on, again, <laughs> first few times you play through Fallout, you don't realize all the potential variations of your playthrough. Yeah. Yeah. So... If you go in and you decide to kill Ton, Ton, what? Who is Tonda? I combined them. Tonda. Tabitha. Tonda. <laughs> um, that makes sense. I mean, so she kind of becomes you, both. So. <laughs> if you go to kill her, um, but you think a little pit stop in the prison, right? And you want to go free Raul, then this will really, really, really upset her. And she will confront you as soon as like your dialogue ends with Raul, she'll come storming in with some buddies and they're going to take you out. Mm -hmm. And so you have to fight her. And in this situation, she's very angry. There's nothing you can do. You can't talk to her anymore. You have to kill her. She's beyond reason. Yeah. She's hulking out on you. Yeah. Yeah. So there, there you have it. That is, uh, 
from beginning to end that is tabitha's story <laughs> that's tabitha's story yeah and and you know like i said before i i think this is a really cool one i i love these nightkin characters because they are so interesting and complex in ways that we don't really get to see super mutants very often so i think it's really good thanks for that was a wonderful synopsis laney thank you for that also yeah, thank you to our new patron we just had a new patron sign up um anthony h thank you anthony that's Thanks, amazing. Anthony. New tier four. <laughs> you get to join us at the end of the month, which is going to be Woo! it's the ninth right now while we're recording this. Um, and we're trying we're trying. We usually we're doing Saturday. Saturdays weren't working for everybody. So I believe we discussed potentially doing this on a Tuesday night at the end of the month, which would be the 27th. But definitely uh, those of you who are patrons or who will be joining us, if you're planning to sign up still, um, if you want to get in on that conversation, definitely join the Discord. Make sure that your Patreon and your Discord are connected so that you can join us in the patron chat rooms. And let me know. Let me know if the 27th works out. I, you know, I, we'll try to accommodate everybody. And if somebody can't make it, you're always welcome to send in your thoughts on the topic. And I can plug that into the episode, even if you can't join us live. So it's something I can always attach to the episode. So let us know if uh, Tuesday, the 27th works for you. It would be at 9 p.m. Eastern, which is 6 p.m. Pacific. And we'll just go from there. And also what kind of topics you want to cover. And this is another thing I was thinking about, Lainey, because we've been doing this for a while, um, this whole patron chat thing. But a lot of the people who joined us on some of the earlier episodes um, aren't necessarily part of the uh, patrons that are at that tier anymore. Um, it, the, like things have kind of cycled out. We've got a lot of new people in tier four and higher patron slots. We could cover some of those topics again and get some new people's perspectives on old topics. So don't be afraid to say like, hey, let's talk about companions again, or let's talk about uh, your favorite Fallout game or expectations for future Fallout games. Or, you know, th there are certain topics that we've already done, but we could totally redo them with new perspectives because I think that's still interesting. And those topics are still uh, juicy just because we covered it once doesn't, doesn't mean that we've hit all the angles especially when it came to a chat episode with our patrons so let us know what you think about that and what topics you guys might want to cover on the future or in the future on the future in the year 2000 that's it's after the year 2000 that was an old conan o'brien thing do you, do you know about this yeah so okay so conan o'brien before the year 2000 in the 90s um <laughs> had a had a sketch on his show where uh w one of the guys in the band would put on like this like black cloak and and then they'd like dim the lights and he'd go in the year 2000 the year 2000 and like or that was, that was terrible I, that's about as high as my voice can get um and then conan and their guest would like make predictions about things that would happen in the year 2000 well the sketch went on past the year 2000 for like a number of years every so often it would be like 2004 and he would still do a predictions for the years 2000 sketch which was hilarious to me because it's, it's that's just silly um but yeah that's <laughs> <laughs> so anytime we talk about predictions of the future, I always like to pretend that year 2000 is still in the future because Conan O'Brien. Thank you, Conan O'Brien. Um, <laughs> uh, Boomer in chat says, I, I really like the favorite random encounter topic. Yeah, that's that was a good one. I enjoyed that as well. Um, Lainey, what else do you have going on before we head out? Anything you want to share? How's how's your new doing other things than the other work that you were doing in life going? Oh, it's good. We finished a project today, which is exciting and was very stressful before it was exciting, of course. So um, I had I had gotten thrown in right at the end of this one mm. and we were developing an online course for teachers to learn how to teach a certain um, computer science course to middle schoolers and so really fun i got to edit a lot of videos it's fun you know people talk about me they're like oh yes i'll send that to my editor and i'm like hey, that's me it's really exciting <laughs> um and so, so yeah it's it was fun but i worked for like just so so long and it had to be turned in by 9 a.m this morning so i just like lots of like late nights just yeah getting it all Knocking done it you out. Know? yeah um so it was really fun and 
Uh, yeah. So now that that's over, I'm no longer stressed. I was very stressed <laughs> before, but I'm oh. okay now. And I got better. Um, <laughs> I got better. Uh, so yeah. And as we talked about at the beginning, my birthday is in four or five days. Yeah. Tuesday, Tuesday. Yeah. Sam in July chat 13th. says uh, stream for your birthday. Well, guess what, Sam? I'm she's going to be, gonna be out of town. She's going to be visiting <laughs> this guy for her birthday. That's true. <laughs> because she loves me the biggest. So I'm sorry. I'm sorry if she doesn't love you as much as she loves me, but I am Maybe her we'll dad. We'll do a, a post birthday stream. 21 year old Lainey graces yeah. the internet for the first yeah. time. Or pre birthday stream. You can stream on like Sunday or something. I got I got plans Sunday through oh, Wednesday. No, oh, you're so busy. I'm not gonna be home until you yeah. Could stream, that, like, you whole... could <laughs> stream from my house. That's true. You could do that. We could have like mobile stream party night or something. We'll we figure do it out. A game show. Let's a do. We can do a birthday show. game show. You it goes. Do... Robots radio hosts. Do they, what do they know? Do they know things? Let's find out. That's how it goes. Okay. <laughs> then, we, then we ask questions and then we find out what the robots radio show hosts know what goes so well with birthday, peanut butter so I win. uh most people will say jelly but bread is the real answer because uh, bananas because you can have a peanut butter and jelly sandwich or a peanut butter sandwich but you can't just have a jelly sandwich have you had a, you've had a banana dog before right no yeah no no. no, no, but I understand oh. what you're talking about. They're so good, dude. You just put the you just put the banana and the bread, and you put the peanut butter, mm -hmm. or or you know, vice versa. Mm -hmm. Scrumptious, big recommend. Well, happy happy <laughs> uh, incoming birthday. What what things do you want for your birthday? Do you have any you have any wishes this year? Any any hopes and dreams? She just wants all of you oh. guys to sign up on Patreon. That's what really what she wants. <laughs> I want to start streaming again. Like I said, post birthday. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. We should do we should do a stream and then people can donate for your birthday, or or just like show up and say happy birthday because that's just, nice too. Just you know? show up and say happy birthday. No pressure. Yeah, yeah. yeah but um, but if, they, if people no want you, you know, like uh, like you never know. Somebody might try to chip in some some bits or something. You you know, people yeah. or they might sub to your channel. That's always fun. That's. That's fun yeah. stuff. They, they, right, they use that, that sweet, sweet Bezos money, which isn't going to be Bezos that's money sweet. anymore because he's that's, retiring. No. Um, <laughs> anyway, yeah. So uh, we'll let you know when that's happening and we'll hang out for your birthday. Um, let's see. I have some new shows still. Uh, the Witcher lore cast and the Witcher Con is today and tomorrow while we record this, uh, which is awesome. There's season two coming out in December for the show. There's a new Witcher mobile game they talked about. They interviewed um, a lot of the stars from the, the TV show. Some of the developers and the showrunner did a quiz. And a lot of this stuff is going to happen tomorrow as well. And if you miss it live, you can probably always go back to their YouTube channel and check out that stuff. So if you're into the Witcher, that stuff's going on. And we also have been doing the Witcher Lorecast on Monday nights at 9 p.m. Eastern live or, of course, on whatever podcatcher you want. And so if you're into the Witcher, then go check that out. Uh, so Thana Toasted, so Toasty and I have been doing that together. And then also we've been doing the Xbox Game Pass show on Monday nights after the Witcher Lorecast at 1030 Eastern. And um, we have the Xbox Game Pass gang, which is kind of like our little little fun little group, little group. There's like 19 of us already that are in there and there's a group on the discord. You don't have to have Xbox Game Pass. You're welcome to join as long as you want to play games with us. You're welcome to join it. Just share your gamer tag. Tell us what platform you're on and then just tune into that channel on the discord for any time that most nights people are saying, Hey, I'm going to be playing day Z tonight, or I'm going to be playing red dead online or GTA or Minecraft or whatever. I don't, I don't know if anybody's played Minecraft yet, but we've been playing lots of different stuff. So even if you have those games, you can still play with us, even if you don't have game pass. So game pass game, 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 the words don't work. And that's what's going on. And, uh, yeah, there you go. Jafafa Bezos? I don't know. I don't think that's a thing. Um, say Jaffa. <laughs> yeah. Also, there was the big update to Fallout 76. Um, we got Steel Rain. So that is there. So if you have 76 or haven't jumped in yet, now is a wonderful time. Lots of big updates, lots of new content, the ability to customize your legendary weapons, to add legendary perks to um, power armor. It's a bunch of cool stuff in there. Go check that stuff out as well. And I think that's it, Lainey. I think we're done. Whoa. 
Hmm. Hmm. Snarf the Sith. This is my says, last episode. L- LMAO. I'm in my 40s and I finally joined a gang. Yeah, me too, Snarf. Me too. Um, <laughs> this is my last episode as a 20 year old. Oh no. Woo! And then you're going to be half my age. Oh no. Wah! Wah! <laughs> you're so old. All right. Well, happy birthday again. And thank you, everybody, for joining us live on the show and everybody for listening and stay safe out there. We will see you again next time. And if you do get a disassociative personality, make sure that you do start a radio show because it might be a benefit. So. All right, guys. See you all later. Have a good one. Plug into everything else we're doing. Check out robotsradio.net. Also, look up the Robots Radio YouTube for videos about Fallout and other things. And check us out on Twitter, twitter.com slash robotsradio. You've been listening to a Robots Radio podcast. Smart shows for interesting people. Check out all the shows at robotsradio.net.